those days when Prometheus had just given fire to men, and when he was first bound to the rock peak to Caucasus, he had a strange visitor. A distracted fleeing creature came, clamoring awkwardly up over the cliffs and crags to where he lay. It looked like a hafer, but talked like a girl who seemed mad with misery. This that I see, a form storm bitten, bound to the rock. Did you do wrong? Is this your punishment? Where am I? Speak to a wretch wanderer. Enough. I have been tried enough. My wandering, long wandering, yet I have found nowhere to leave my misery. I am a girl who speak to you, but horns are on my head. I know you, girl. You are Inoku's daughter, Ayo. You made God's heart hot with love. And Hera hates you. She it is. Who drives you on this flight that never ends. Who are you, sufferer, that speak the truth to one who suffers? You see Prometheus, who gave mortals fire. You, he would succor the whole race of men. You, with Prometheus, the dreading, the enduring. What are those thick clouds? Ah, I think I know who's responsible for this. Zeus. Zeus' jealous wife Hera was the direct cause of her misfortunes, but back of all them all was Zeus himself. He fell in love with her. to do something. This won't last long. But... There you are, Zeus. Oh, Mera, it's you. What a beautiful hyper you have there. You somehow look like someone. Ah, uh, no. Just what you think. Actually, it's a gift for you. Right, a special gift for you. Oh, really? Well, then I'll accept it. Look after this cow. Make sure that it won't be lost. 
now uh, that you're here with me, I will protect you, and you're gonna be mine. Now eat that, so you will get here. You will stay here. I must do something to save that poor creature. Zeus, where are you going? Um, I'm just excited. Hmm, make sure of that. Oh. Hermes, are you there? Yes, what is it that you need? Help that poor creature. Kill Argos, as you wish. You kid, can you please come here with me and continue playing your flute? Me? Yes. Okay. You might go as well sit by me in this seat. Just right for the shepherd. Ha! And now that you are asleep, For Hera valued Argus so dearly, she took his eyes and set them in the tail of the peacock, her favorite bird. It seems then that Io was free, but no. Hera at once turned on her again. She sent a godfly to plug her, which stung her to madness. Prometheus tried to comfort her, but he could point her only to the distant future. What lay immediately before her was still more wandering and in fearsome land. To be sure, the part of the sea she first trod along in her frenzy would be called Ionian after her, and the Bosphorus, which means the ford of the cows, would preserve the memory of when she went through it. But her real consolation must be that at long last she would reach the Nile, where Zeus would restore her to her human form. She would bear him a son named Ephapus and live forever after, happy and honored. Io's descendant would be Hercules, greatest of heroes, than whom hardly the gods were greater, and to whom Prometheus would owe his freedom. She's mine! Europa is mine! She's mine! I was the one who was giving birth to her! But then Zeus will give her to me! No! No! What a bad dream. I guess I shouldn't sleep anymore. Not again.
everyone, I want you all, girls of my age, to join me by the meadows near the sea. Let's all have some fun. Okay. okay. All right. Lovely as the basket was, there were flowers as lovely to fill it with. Sweet smelling narcissus and hyacinths, and violets and yellow crocus, and most great in the fall, the crimson splendor of the wild rose. The girls gathered them delightedly, wandering here and there over the meadows. Each one a maiden fairest among the pair, yet even so, Europa shone out among them, as the goddess of love outshines the sister graces. plan to be near her as long as Hera isn't around. Aha! I know what to do. Try mong gumanin. Gagalong yan. The bull lay down before her feet and seemed to show her his broad back. Smiling, she sat down on his back, but the others, quick though they were to follow her, had no chance. The bull leaped up and at full speed rushed to the seashore and then, not into but over the wide water. As he went, the waves grew smooth before him, and a whole procession rose up from the deep and accompanied him. The strange sea gods, nereids riding upon dolphins and tritons blowing their horns, and the mighty master of the sea himself, Zeus' own brother. Europa, frightened equally by the wondrous creature she saw in the moving waters all around, clung with one hand to the bull's great horn and with the other caught her purple dress to keep it dry. No bull could this be, thought Europa, but most certainly a god. And she spoke pleading to him begging him to pity her and not leave her in some strange places all alone. He spoke to her in answer and showed her she had guessed rightly what he was. She had no cause to fear, he told her. He was Zeus, the greatest of gods, 
and all he was doing was some love of her. He was taking her to Crete, his own island, where his mother had hidden him from Cronus when he was born. Everything happened, of course, as Zeus had said. Crete came into sight. They landed, and the seasons, the gatekeepers of Olympus, eyed her for her bridal. Her sons were famous men, not only in this world but in the next. For two of them, Minos and Radamantus, were awarded for their justice upon the earth by being made the judges of the dead. But her own name remains the best known of all.